Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Let's talk uh, one more time about uh, managing systems in Clojure. I already covered on this channel uh, libraries like Component and Integrant. If you're interested, uh, videos are already on the channel, so check them out. Uh, but recently I was reading a, a blog uh, by Juxt uh, and it is about uh, Griffin and how they use Clojure. And one specific uh, topic that um, I was interested in is this section section about libraries and the question was uh, which library um, are they using for their managing state and building their um, system and uh, interestingly uh, the answer was that they're not using like component or integrant but they are using a simple pattern that was described in a like a blog post many years ago and I decided to give it a try and I actually really like the, the idea and uh, for a simple application or like if you don't want to bring a new dependency, a new library, um, I think that's like a um, legit approach and let's cover what, uh, what it's all about. So um, imagine we have uh, a system there where we have like a database and an HTTP server, we want to start them uh, and also HTTP server wants a database as a dependency because we want access to database from the handles, handlers, for, for example. So um, I created like a dummy functions for now. Uh, let's add some print statements so we know that they are starting. So let's say we want print line here uh, saying starting uh, database component and let's pass the db spec and same for the http server let's say print line starting http server and this will be the config and also let's say um, dependencies and let's print dependencies as well. Cool. So now we can run those functions. New passing db spec. And we have this print line. So to build the system, uh, what we want to do is let's say we, we have a function, uh, my system. And it will take some config as an input. And here we want basically uh, start db start server um, and we want to pass dependencies, right? So if we want, we can use just let to do that manually. So we can say uh, database uh, new database db uh, like db spec from the config and after that we can do um, http server new http server and then for dependencies let's say we want database and we now will have access to our database because we already started it so we're kind of doing it like the uh, dependency injection manually so like manually wiring up our system and uh, here for the config, let's say we have something like HTTP server key in our input config. Uh, config. And yeah, that's it. The problem now is that at the end of this, we kind of want to manually close, stop these components in reverse order. Um, and basically that's what uh, component library is doing for us as we define dependencies between our system components uh, the library is building a graph so on the start it knows the order how we want to start the system and on the stop it is doing it uh, in reverse order but here we'll have to do that manually uh, but the idea from that article uh, is that we can try to utilize a with open <coughs> macro i believe it's macro yeah it is uh, and the idea here is that uh, it's supposed to work with a closable interface so 
if our bindings uh, are closable, implement the closable interface, uh, we will do uh, the body, but also uh, in the final block, uh, finally, it basically means if there was an exception or, or the normal um, exit of this block, uh, we will call close method on, on the binding. So what we can do is we can, instead of let, bring this thing into uh, with open and basically after that uh, we don't need to close our components because it will be automatically done by the, the macro uh, and also uh, we kind of like the the language actually helps us to build the system because uh, we cannot uh, define HTTP server before the database because we we need dependency here so you will kind of naturally write your code in a way um, that all dependency are started uh, created in correct correct order the problem here now is that our, the result of our new database or new HTTP server um, is not implementing a closable interface and that's why if we uh, try to run uh, my system and pass some config there'll be a problem that there is no field close which basically means there's no method close on uh, on the map uh, that's returned from here and the solution is to use uh, something like this uh, and it's like a sm simple helper function uh, which we can use to wrap our values into a closable interface. So here, um, if uh, we just want value, uh, the close function will be just identity, so nothing uh, will happen. But we can also override the close function if we want custom logic. So uh, basically, it will take our value and put it inside a um, uh, like a class implementation, uh, like Reify is to implement uh, protocols uh, like in interfaces from Java, and we want to implement two. We want I the ref, uh, so we can do uh, the reference function calls uh, to get the value, uh, but also we can do uh, we we implement in closable with close method. Uh, so to to make things uh, working, we now can do uh, closable and just pass the value inside and uh, closable here as well. And as this will now be a ref interface, to actually get the value, we can uh, just use um, syntax sugar from closure. Uh, it basically means ref on database. Um, so let's try that. And see if it works. So now we have starting. Uh, we also can add something like uh, print line system started. And let's do HTTP server and then thread sleep in like five seconds. And to actually check that we are calling the close um, method, we can pass a function here. Uh, as you can see, the second argument is the implementation, custom implementation of the close method. So here uh, we'll get our database and we can do something like print line. Uh, Stopping database and let's put database here and we can do the same for our HTTP server so it will be fn um, HTTP server print line stopping HTTP server HTTP server So let's run it. So now we can see that we 
uh, have two start print lines, then we have our message that the system was started uh, and after five seconds as our program uh, exits, we have two automatically called close methods on our components. So now the only thing you need to do to make this real is actually implement a creation of your data source inside this function and implement what you want to do when you stopping the component and the same for, for the server. So in the server, like you want to start your JT or whatever you're using, and then on um, on close, you want to implement stop server function. And here inside the system, uh, you just want to block on something like once your server is started, just block on that and uh, your system won't exit until you receive like a um, system call for for exit. And yeah, that's that's it. Uh, I think that's really nice uh, approach uh, and really elegant use of with open. Um, people can argue that it's a bit of hacky, but I think it's uh, um, simple enough to understand and it's really easy to uh, to use. And also in the I'll share links uh, in the blog post uh, there are some help functions if you want to uh, use something similar to uh, reloaded workflow for the component so you can uh, stop and start your system from the REPL and do the refresh of namespaces. Uh, there are a couple lines of code that you can use uh, to implement exactly the same uh, behavior. So yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed um, and leave your thoughts in the comments and also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, see you next video. Bye bye.